What's up guys? Welcome to thefixalab.net. This is Jordan Condell and today we're going to talk about another RPF option that we have in After Effects. So last time we talked about the object ID. This time I'm going to show you how to uh, do depth of field in After Effects really easily. There are ways to do depth of field in Cinema 4D, um, but they do take a little bit of time to set up and you don't have as much leeway after you render, right? Because it's kind of baked in. So this is kind of an interesting way to give you some more flexibility. So all we really have to do is render out an RPF sequence. So if you go to Format and go to RPF, Options, all you need is Z space. This uh, basically just calculates and bakes into your RPF the Z space and um, kind of where every object sits along the Z space, which is going to be what we'll need in a second. Um, besides that, you really don't have to do anything. Um, that's it. So let's hit render. All right, let's head on over to After Effects. Go we'll ahead and import our file. And uh, like before, you don't have to import any other multi passes, just the RPF. Go we'll ahead and make a new sequence here. All right, so we're going to go to the same place, 3D channel. And this time we're going to go to depth of field. And if we put that on, nothing's going to happen immediately because we have to turn on the, uh, the maximum radius. This is how much blur it's going to be. So if we turn this to something like five, there we go. All right, now your focal plane is gonna be what's in focus. But if you scrub this and try to find uh, a place to be in focus, you're not gonna find it. That's because before you do that, you need to make the thickness larger. It's at zero, meaning zero pixels are gonna be in focus. But if we widen that area and then scrub through our focal plane, you're gonna be able to find uh, a spot when part of your image will be in focus. So right now it's a very narrow band that's in focus. So if we want to increase the band that's in focus, we can increase this plane thickness. Now you can see that the ones in front are in focus, but the ones in back are dropping out of focus. And uh, if we want to make this a little more dramatic, you can bump this up a little bit. I find that um, it doesn't look as good if you make this um, larger than you know three or four. It should be a pretty subtle effect. You can see that the blur is getting kind of kind of strange looking, and also you're you're losing the pixels on the edge of your comp. So you might have to scale it up a little bit. Um, yeah, but I would probably keep this guy around, you know, three or four, I don't know. Keep it kind of subtle, because otherwise it starts looking kind of hokey. Um, besides that, it's really just a matter of playing around. Your focus plane is kind of fun. You can animate this to do kind of a rack focus effect. And uh, the simplicity is really cool, because just like that, you can keyframe what's in focus, what's not, all based on that Z-space data on your RPF sequence. And then you don't have to, you know, kind of worry about doing uh, your depth of field in cinema. You have a lot more control here, and obviously it's a lot faster without any need for rendering. So that is depth of field with an RPF sequence. Hope you guys found that useful. Thanks for checking out the site. We'll talk again real soon. Bye, everybody.